How to use Cal.com for beginners. Hey everyone and welcome. I hope you're all doing great. In this video, I'll be talking about Cal.com, how to use it and how to set it up if you're just getting started. Now, if you're an individual, it's going to be completely for free. But if you're going to be teams, then it's going to um, have some uh, subscription to it. And I will show you that in a sec. But basically, let's talk about what Cal.com is at first. Basically, Cal.com is going to be a platform that is going to help you um, schedule your bookings, your uh, services, whatever it may be. And you can just create um, all sorts of things and you have your availability. Set up the times that you want to have buffer time, uh, how long a meeting is going to take. All of those things are going to be available from within Cal.com. There's a lot of talk. There's a lot to talk about. So let's just go get into it. We can read here scheduling inf infrastructure for everyone um, and we can see here they also Rick rolled us which is unfortunate but don't shoot the messenger um, so let's talk about the pricing before we even get started uh, so if we just go to cal.com to pricing we can see here individuals is completely for free but if you want to have teams or organizations then you can know what to do you will need to uh, well sign up for this one so with that being said if we just go back home to get started just click on this uh here so click on get started and here you'll need to give yourself a username i'm just going to uh, go for this one uh, and then here you will want to have your email address i'm just going to go for that one and then your password and then you will want to consent to the pri privacy policy after you have read it and the cookie usage here's going to be the terms uh, and privacy policy so make sure you read them uh, agree to this add your password and click on create account uh, and this is as simple as it is i'm just going to actually go for google here it's just going to be easier for me okay so more setting up uh things here so username because i signed up with google now so they're going to ask me again uh, full name and then time zone it's going to automatically locate where you are is going to set up the time zone but if you want to change it feel free to do so it's not going to make a lot of difference but for you it will so uh once you're happy with this click on next step here you will need to connect the calendar that you will be using so i'm just going to go for google calendar this is the one that i'll be using so just click on connect to whichever one that you actually want to connect and follow through with the steps of that specific calendar now for this one it's very easy and simple so i'm just going to click on continue and click on continue here so select all and then continue make sure you give them all the permissions they need in order to make this work properly so uh, the only thing i'm just going to turn on is here the, the uh, owns uh, calendar i'm not going to turn on birthdays or ho or holidays uh, in the UAE so I'm just going to leave this as it is and yes click on continue now this is basically how you, uh, you want to um, have your meetings if it's going to be a call so you can just connect your Google Meet, Discord, Zoom um, and all of those other platforms here so feel free to connect whichever one you think uh, is going to work for you uh, and click on connect and go through with it i will just set this up later because uh or actually i think google meet is not going to require a lot of time here okay so just click on next step once you're done or set up later really it's up to you now is going to be the availability now this is actually very important uh and take your time when you're actually setting this up now if you do mess up you get to change it later on from the settings so do not worry too much about it but yeah the days that you will be working on, uh, it's from Monday till Friday. Let's say I want it to be, um, so Friday off, Sunday as as a day that I want to work on. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, and and now you will need to set up the time for, uh, each one of them. So let's say for example, Monday is going to be work from uh let's just change it up a little bit from 11 to uh 4 30 p.m okay 
Now let's say you want to just go ahead and make make it the same for the rest of them. Just click on copy times to uh, select all and then click on apply. It's not, it's, we can just turn these off again. It's just going to work exactly the same. But let's say you have two shifts and you want work two shifts. Uh, you can easily do that and manage that by just clicking on the plus icon here. Add a new time slot. And then here we can just go ahead and set up the next shift so let's say from 8 30 p.m till i know it's it's not realistic but uh who knows maybe maybe it is realistic uh and then we can just make it so that it is uh, 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 there you go and now let's say i want to copy this now to the rest of them again just go ahead and do that and we can just copy to all and then turn these two off friday and saturday Okay, so now you can see we have our schedule or availability ready to go. Uh, now click on next step. Here we are going to set up our profile. So add a profile picture of yourself uh, and just go ahead and talk about yourself a little bit. So, um, well, test. Okay, so once you write a little bit about yourself and add your profile picture, you just click on finish. And you should be done and ready to go. Now, here are going to be the events uh, that you will be creating. Uh, by default, they are going to create three events for you. Uh, one of them is a secret meeting, which is going to be hidden. It's going to be private. Uh, and then we have two others here, which are, you know, one is a 30 minutes meeting and one is a 15 minute meeting. We can just go ahead and delete those uh, if you want. And by the way, the events that you actually create uh, in here are actually going to show up in your calendar with your Google Calendar or Apple Calendar. Uh, it depends on the calendar that you actually connected. But regardless, you can just go to event types here uh, and just click on create to create your first event. So I'm just going to do test events. There you go. URL, I'm just going to keep it as is, test event. Uh, here is going to be um, a little description of what's really going to happen within this uh, event. So I'm just going to do uh, uh, a quick, <laughs> like the actually text that said that a quick video meeting, exactly like the text that was here. And then duration is going to be the duration of the service or meeting that you will be doing. So let's just do 30 minutes. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and click on continue now. So now the event has been created. Now we will need to set up a few things here in the event setup. You'll have the title, the description, everything that we have already uh, set up. Um, here you can set up how you want to actually, um, talk with the person. So whether it's going to be through Google meets or the actual uh, Cal uh, video conferencing application, which is built in. Uh, or you can actually go ahead and make it in person and s set up a specific uh, address. So they can meet you in that specific address. So if you're doing a real life service, you can just go ahead for this option. I'm just going to stick with Google Meet for the time being and move on to the next step, which is availability. I'm just going to keep it as a working hours um and just you know move on to the next one here so which is the limits so here is going to be the before event if you want to have a buffer time before the actual event you can do so but i'm just going to highly recommend to have no buffer time because you set uh exactly when the uh, thing is so after event also no buffer time but if you want to you can have a 10 minute uh, buffer time be between each event and you have more stuff here like there's quite a lot i don't really want to take uh, all of this time to show you exactly all of these settings just feel free to go ahead and explore all of those things this is just for the events after this you can just click on save um and if you want to hide you can also select that one is going to be hidden so here we have our uh, event ready to go obviously there's a lot more that we could have set up but yeah Next up, we have bookings here. They're going to show you all the bookings that have been 
uh, added or, or submitted in here uh, and we have the availability which you can set up uh, you can add a new availability so we can actually you know use it within the uh, event teams well if you're an individual this is not going to work for you but if you have your team members here then you can just feel free to have them and more stuff here like workflows and insights uh, but yeah, most of it is just going to be from within the actual event. So for example, if it's reoccurring, you can just set up this. So make sure you uh, turn this on and you can just repeat it if you want to. Um, if you want, you know, there's a lot of things here. Workflows, you will need to set them up from within the workflows tab. And yeah, so uh, you can just, you know, create as many as you would like from uh, here. You can just go to event types, create them. And you have them over here and obviously the last thing that you should do is just go ahead and copy a link to event uh, send it out to whoever you um, to your social media or whatever it may be and you have your service ready to go to get booked with that being said i hope that you found this video easy to follow uh, and thanks for watching